Hey guys, in this one uh, we're going to be doing kind of a build a base file. Um, this is for a 2010 Camaro SS. Um, if we go up here we can look at um, the vehicle and look at the engine displacement. Uh, this is a automatic car. Um, so this car has been equipped with a um, stage 2-ish camshaft um, and some headers, and I believe it still has catalytic converters and stock injectors and stuff like that. So pretty simple file. I'm gonna kind of just show you how I go through and get something set up. Uh, so under the general tab, we're not gonna need to do anything. We didn't change the displacement or anything like that. Over here under idle, this is gonna be um, the biggest one. The nice thing with some of the, with, with the Gen 4s is that they don't have the throttle cracker, um, you know, like the Gen 3s do. So I feel like getting the idle, um, dialed in is uh, much easier and then on the gen 5s even easier so if we go to base set point it's going to be our commanded um, rpm and so we're going to select this whole thing and we're just going to do like 200 so bump that up to 200 this may need to be more like i'm probably going to go ahead and just call this 750 actually um hit equals 750 is like kind of my kind of my number um our minimum uh, VSS. I'm going to set this all to 750. Um, that way it doesn't drop and down here try to um, overshoot as it's coasting down. Um, start up and park neutral. I'm probably just going to go everywhere in here um, that's not um, at that 570 and just kind of make all of it all of the 570 or sorry 750. My bad. Um, not really going to change anything down here, um, at least until we fire it up and just kind of see how it's behaving. So you kind of just go over here and select 750. So um, same thing here, set these at 750 as well. And then the adaptive idle and everything, um, no need to really go in here and do anything with that. Um, same thing with the follower. Um, no need to really do that. So now we're commanding more of an idle. We're going to need more, more airflow um, slash spark um, to get us there. No need to change the ETC scaler, anything in here. All the cooling fan stuff is already set up. We're going to go over here to this airflow final minimum, which is your basically your base running airflow if you're a Gen, Gen 3 guy. Um, five grams per second. There's our um, unit that we're, units that we're working in. Um, you can use pound per hour. You can use, you know, basically whatever you want. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to say from 4,000 and above, we're just going to call this 21. And down here for this camshaft up to a thousand, let's call it 11 grams a second. And then we'll go over here and we'll do a horizontal interpolation. There again, we can come back and adjust this. Um, you know, whether it needs a little bit more, needs a little bit less. Um, and there's nothing really else in here. All these multipliers, not going to do much with that. I'm not going to do anything with the automatic transmission stuff yet. AC ramp in, ramp out. No need to really touch that. Um, airflow. Um, this is a Gen 4. So I am going to go ahead and set this to... Um, just run off the mass airflow frequency. We're going to disable the virtual volumetric efficiency, efficiency table, at least for right now. Um, you could go into this MAF curve and you could maybe add 5 or 6 or 7% um, fuel up top if you wanted to, um, just kind of as a preemptive measure maybe. Um, you could go from maybe like 9,000. And if we, you know went in here and we put, let's do 5% fuel. And you can see it creates kind of a little bit of a hump right here. So um, if we go over here and we can hover, it'll show us where we're at. Okay, obviously we need to do an interpolation. Here we go. And that's just kind of a preemptive measure. You know, you may end up having to go back and take that back out when you do your wide open throttle fueling. Um, map sensor stuff is not changing to one bar map sensor. Um, cranking DE at least for now, you can set this all to 85 just to take some of the fuel out of it. And then I am going to set the dynamic, I'm gonna set this to 300 and the re-enable to 200. So on fire up, we are going to reference some of the um, VE coefficients 
um, but to get it dialed in, um, there's all of our VE coefficients right there, which will change if you alter the virtual volumetric efficiency table, which we're not going to. Electronic throttle, no need to go in here and do anything with that. This vehicle, um, I believe, does have a um, VVT delete. So we'll go up here to camshafts and we'll hit none. Um, that would be what we want to do there. And just for checks and balances, you could come in here and you could set all of these to, um, to zero. You don't necessarily have to, but um, you could. So I think that's always kind of a thing that I like to do just because. Um, on the intake side, that is. No need to do it on the, um, on the exhaust side. And then I think everything else over here is going to be fine. Obviously, supercharger, we're not using that. Fuel, storage point. Um, we're going to leave this alone. Um, this, I believe this vehicle doesn't have flex fuel. It might, might have a virtual sensor. I'm not sure. But we're going to leave that alone. Uh, I don't really see the need to um, do anything with that. We're going to come down here to the desuit mode um, and disable that. It says here, enrichment, injector desuit mode. If enabled, injector desuit mode will enable fueling enrichment mode, such as power enrichment. Um, rich after cranking is what will come from that, so we want to get rid of that. Um, we can go ahead and get rid of the long-term fuel trims. Go in here, something like this, and we'll make this map 255, which it'll never get to. And I believe that that is that. Our open loop base, really no need to come in here and change any of this, at least not right now. Um, there's just, just no need to. Let's see, um, power enrichment, a lot, a lot that can be done here. Um, let's make the minimum map something a little bit higher, maybe like 65 kPa. Um, it's a car, it's not a, not a truck or an SUV, so it is gonna have um, much uh, lower values for the trigger. So if we want, these look pretty good already, but if we wanted to, we could say 5,000 and above, it takes 10% throttle or something like that, and we could go two to 2,000 to 5,000. We'd do something like that, that would probably be okay. The delay, let's set that to like 800. The ramp in, you can do one. You can even do like 1.3. Um, and then this looks kind of weird, um, as they always do from the factory. Um, we're just going to set this to 1.176. It's like 12.5 um, or like uh, 0.85 lambda, somewhere in there. That will probably be okay. And then we can copy that to the alcohol table as well. And this will definitely be able to get you up and running. Um, let's see, temperature control, it does have cats, the max enrichment, we can set that at 1.176. Um, fuel decel, we're not gonna get rid of that. Um, these limiters are probably gonna be okay. I am gonna go in here and change this under the control method. I do not want the spark or the fuel um, to be um, a hard cut, so I'm gonna go in here and I want to l select the, I want to enable the fuel cut. Um, actually, I want to enable the electronic throttle cut and I want to disable the um, cut methods here. So I do not want the spark to cut out and I do, want, not, do not want the fuel to cut out. So it says right here if you hover over it, um, RPM limit spark. If enabled, PCM will use spark to control uh, engine speed. We don't want to do that. Uh, we want to disable that, and we want the electronic throttle to be the one that does that. So, Excel threshold. I uh, just want to zero this out. We don't need it. It is not needed. Nothing else in here needs to be changed. Lean fuel saving. Um, we can turn the DOD off. Not using that. And then transient and flex fuel, I'm not gonna use that. Spark, spark smoothie needs to be disabled. You do not need that. Our gas correction, zero that out. We want everything coming from the high octane table, more or less. Intake air temperature, 
depending on where you are, this car is down here in um, the southeast. We're going to go up until, I'm going to zero out anything up until about 122. And then we can just take everything and just kind of bring it down that way. It's not until 131 degrees of air intake temp that it starts to pull any timing out. Obviously, if you have a boosted application, that's going to be a lot more. Um, here, let's see. Yeah, I mean, 230 is like kind of the, that's kind of the limit, I think, where I would want it to start pulling. So we'll go, we'll zero out the 212, and then we'll go 212 and over and just do a horizontal interpolation. That way it kind of starts to pull, pull then. Um, let's go over here to the idle spark base and coast down. We're not gonna mess with anything else. 13's probably gonna be a little bit low. So what we might do is go up here and bump this to like 18. 18 is kind of like the number I feel like. And you can do like a little interpolation here if you would like, same thing over here and what I would probably do is just copy this table um, this table is basically only used for like this area right here um, and maybe over in here if you slam the throttle shut we'll copy that and we'll go to the coast down table and just paste that and that's gonna be just fine uh, DOD uh, high and low have been disabled we don't need to worry about those probably gonna leave um, these values in there for now. Um, if you can see, this is what the spark table kind of looks like um, as it is right now. And I mean, if you wanted to, what you could do is just select this. This is a time where I would recommend using the smooth button and just hit the smooth button a few times just to kind of flatten everything out. Um, this would be just good enough to get you up and going. Down here, you probably don't want all these negative numbers, but that's okay. Um, and then for right now, what I would do is go in here and hit copy. And we're gonna go to our low table and hit paste and if you're doing the tuning if you're in the tuning process what you could do is you could just leave these the same for right now just be be mindful of your not detection go in here or you can um, paste it to the low octane table and take eight degrees out and that'll give you plenty of room uh, for it to learn down if needed um, EGR we don't need VCT spark we can go ahead and just checks and balance get rid of that since we got rid of the variable cam cam timing catalyst heating we're going to leave that in place for right now because we do have that we're not going to touch maximum brake torque let's see startup spark um we don't want to have any negative values in here so what we're going to do is just select these last few and we're going to hit these as seven That'll be fine. Not going to touch the over and under speed, anything like that, or the minimum base. Not for right now. I do want to go back to airflow. Uh, sorry, idle real quick. Back to our startup airflow. Um, and we're probably going to, what we're commanding in our base running airflow, we kind of want to mimic here in this idle startup airflow table. So I may go right here and command, let's just say 13. That's probably a good number. Up here, we can increase this to maybe... 21 that's probably okay and then we can do like a interpolation there and we can always go back and adjust that that way if it fires off you know too aggressively or something like that then we can we can go back and tame those down knock retard we're gonna go in here to the amount and we're gonna make this three it's just kind of a kind of the number that we like to use the recovery rate's a big one uh, 0.203 is kind of just the Again, the number that we like to use, a lot of folks use, so hit that right there. We're probably gonna leave the burst knock alone for right now. You can set it, set all this to one if you wanted to. You can go in here or set this guy to zero, like so. Um, and that would be, you know, that would be okay. Um, that would essentially get rid of it. Um, and you could set all the, these guys, you know, to zero if you wanted to. We're not gonna touch the dwell, I need to do that. And then the knock sensors, we're gonna bump this up to like 164. And maybe bump the voltage to like 80. Something like that. The rest of this we can, the rest of this we can probably leave alone. Uh, torque model, don't need to touch any of this, thankfully. Um, AC compressor, I don't need to touch any of that. Torque management. Um, all right, so the next thing, 
All right, so the next thing is that we're gonna go in here to the um, torque management and we can go ahead and just set all these to like 6042, um, just kind of the limit that's gonna be um, what you wanna do. Now, granted, you're probably not gonna Probably not going to ever reach that, but that's perfectly fine. Um, this is just kind of a just kind of a thing that we do. So make sure there's nothing in the way. Um, there we go. Probably won't do the reverse one just because I don't, but you certainly can. And then come over here, let's see, 6042, 6042, um, break torque limit. Go ahead and just update that as well. Hit equal, that's gonna be fine. And then if I come over here, Let's see, tip and limiting, disable, disable. Um, probably going to disable all of these. And then we can go in here. And we can select all these to 6042 as well. Again, just to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be in the way of the throttle um, doing what it's supposed to do, or what you're commanding it to do, rather. And honestly, for most of the people out there, um, a lot of these limits and the traction control stuff, like you're just never gonna, never gonna hit it. Um, 60.42 and equals. And then you can also do, um, the, rev, the neutral rev limiter as well. Um, if you wanted to, the limit rate. Let's just go ahead and do all these. You can do it in park um, as well. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to leave the throttle rate limit alone. And then if we go over here, torque limit versus RPM, I'm going to go ahead and disable these. I'm going to leave the throttle reduction in though. And if we go over here to use fuel cut and use spark under the fast torque exit, really don't want that to get in the way. Um, and I guess you can max those out as, max those out as well if you wanted to. Um, not going to touch oil starvation, wheel hop control, not going to touch those unless maybe I really need to once the vehicle's up and running. Let's see, traction control method. We're going to disable that. We're going to let the electronic throttle be what handles that for us. So not going to touch AC uh, torque reduction or the supercharger. So let me just go back here into general just one last time. And you can read down here, guys, what, what, what it is that you're changing. So right here where it says spark torque limit, Axle max torque limit with spark time. Axle maximum torque limit selection with spark timing. Um, you know, so that means that you're going to have to meet, you know, one of these triggers for this to even consider being active. So just by disabling it, it's just kind of part of the checks and balances. Let's see. If you go up here and you hit torque limit, tip in limit, master enable, disable for the tip in torque limit function. So if you disable this, it's basically going to get rid of all of this anyway. So um, the next thing, we've already put it, uh, we can raise up this, we can raise up these P2, uh, P2101s P2 um, to something like 10 just to kind of deaden those a little bit. Um, the high volt test, I'm not going to touch those for right now. Um, let's see, below this engine RPM, the enable RPM, P0068 test will not run. I'm going to set this to like something high, like 8,000, just to get that out of the way. Um, I'm not going to touch anything else in here. The mass, mass airflow sensor is still in use. 
Um, misfire. Looks like we have a read only um, deal, so I have to go and check that out. Um, it may throw some misfire codes, it may not. So, um, oxygen sensors, not going to touch those. DTCs, you could go in and you could um, disable um, your rear O2 sensors. It looks like it won't let us. Um, I believe that the um, person that um, pulled this file, they um, um, haven't done the HP Tuners EPA um, test yet, um, quiz yet, or you know, whatever you got to do to unlock that. So the next thing is we'll go to we'll go to system. We're gonna go down here to the fan control and 210. We want this to be. 91, never set this to 100%, you'll burn fan motors up. And then we'll go here, select this to 25 equals, and then we'll just interpolate this, and that will be good. So this is kind of how I would set this up for right now, guys. I'd go over here, um, wide open throttle, we can disable the um, AC, set our re-enables, that's a good one to use. So we'll do that, and this is where I would go ahead and fire the vehicle up, and you'd be should be good to go. So um, for right now, this is going to be um, this is going to be a good place to start. Um, and in the next video, we'll work on the transmission. So thanks for watching. Give us a like and a comment and subscribe. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.